Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? I hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye as well and also my Patreon link in the description if you want to support me that way. Otherwise, just keep watching. In this game, the game number four, we're going to make a little platformer, I thought. So one thing we haven't really went through is collision proper collision not just bounding box intersection but proper collision so we're going to add that to this this is a little list of some things that i want to do so i want to have a moving background we're going bottom to top here we just do it we do it our own way here and then a simple menu just to go into the game uh, some type of scoring system leveling i'm calling it because you want to go up in, in levels uh, but it won't really do anything for your character in that sense it's more of a point system uh, platformer that contains the collision here we'll have some points as well all right fine we'll have some points as well we'll see how we combine these maybe fonts of course we have done that before we're going to do it some type of simple animations i want to do textures that uh, textured enemies including the animations of course and then the game class itself and a bunch of more things probably or less we'll see how we combine some of these points but this is kind of what you can expect from this game so pretty simple not too complicated and we like that to start off of course i want to do i want to tell you something that's really good to have in games and if you're using visual studio you can do this uh, because i don't know how to do this in linux just as as of now but you might be able to google that up for yourself what i did so step by step what i did is i created a file called stdafx.h and this is called a pre-compiled header. Okay, we're gonna be creating a pre-compiled header and then we're gonna be using it. So the way that works is you create this file. You can pretty much name it whatever you want, but this is the default name. You add all the libraries you want in here. So let's say I'll, I'll be adding more things in here, okay? But this is pretty much what we're gonna add. And then what happens is these will be not included each time we run it. It will only be compiled once as a big package and that will be quickly imported into our game anytime we run our game or application because importing these big huge libraries takes a lot of time and when we have a lot of them it takes a lot of time to compile we don't like that so pre-compile headers are great for that to shorten down compile time go ahead and add all your libraries you want in this h file you do need a cpp file but you can put a little comment in here make sure to create the cpp file with the same name as the header file and as well as that, you want to include the header file in the CPP file. So it's like when you're making a regular old class. Uh, it's nothing more special than that. So go ahead and do that. But in here, nothing special needed for pre PCH. That stands for pre-compiled header compilation. So you're not supposed to put anything here. It's just needed to create the object file later on. So you have your two pre-compiled header files. Now the next thing is going to be to right click on your stdafx.cpp, the cpp file, go to your properties, go to C, C++, go down a few steps to pre-compiled headers, and you want to put, you want to make sure all this is okay. So what I do is I usually do all configurations, all platforms up here. Then I go ahead and put create here on the pre-compiled header, create, make sure it's create, not use. Make sure this name is exactly the same name as your two files here. And then this you can leave as whatever it is. So these three in the CPP files should look like this. All platforms, all configurations, press okay. Go to your project here, right click your project and then properties. Once you do that, do the same thing. Go to C, C++, change it from whatever you have to all configurations, all platforms. So we'll do this configuration for all platforms and everything. Uh, and then you want to put use here instead. Use, not create, use. And you want to make sure this name here is the same as your newly created files. And then this you'll leave it as it is. So just make sure it looks like this for your project file. Press OK. And then once you run it the first time, it's going to compile the headers. And then the next time you run it, it's not going to do that. And it's going to be very, very quick. Uh, so that is that for the pre-compiled header, nothing more special. I'm just going to run it once to make sure it runs and we don't have any issues. We don't, don't have any issues right there. If I run it again, it's really quick and it's not loading all that stuff in all the time. That's going to be fine. The next step in this game is of course to create the game class. Now we always have a game class 
and it's always good to have it's always good to practice how to do this so i'm just going to do a game class here base class don't need that virtual destructor i'll put that in there and we're good you don't need to put virtual destructor if you don't want it's only if you're going to do any inheritance from this i usually have it as a as a habit to put that in because i do a lot of inheritance work so that's why i do it but you don't have to do it anyway you'll get your game and game.h here game.h game.cpp and this is going to contain all our stuff for example the windows and all that stuff now of course we haven't included we have not included i'm going to remove this stda effects from the main here i'm going to keep it in game.cpp excuse me i'm sorry about that i'm going to remove it from my main and i'm going to include game here instead game.h like that uh, game dot h like this and i might include my std include stda effects right in there remove it from game and i'll get all that pre-compiled header action up in here and we're good to go very good so our game class of course we have done that before i just want to tell you guys one thing is that i haven't done the linking of sfml for this video but I want you guys to know it is linked and that video is in the beginning of this whole series. So if you go to the beginning of the series, you'll find a few videos on how to link SFML to your project. So I'll just show you quickly. It should be linked here. If you go to active, active, whatever, you'll see we have our external include here. And then we have in the linker also our SFML stuff linked already. And in the game or in the general here for linker, uh, we have the library linked in here so everything is done you don't have to worry too much about that what you want to do though is add a few things here the ones i've added to our stdafx.h file and you want to include the sfml stuff so sfml stuff include sfml like that and then <clears throat> we want to do system that hpp graphics that hpp then we want to do audio.hpp maybe we'll want to also add what else do we have then let's see you can see what you have by checking it here so we have config graphics network system window.hpp of course and then include we'll just include everything you don't have to worry when you have pre-compiled headers network.hpp good so you have all your stuff linked for your SFML. And once that is done, I have to check that I'm running. Yes, I am. Good. And we're going to be just creating the game class here. Boom, boom. Very nice. Let's start off by creating our SF render window. Window. Now, if you haven't watched my previous videos in this series where we create the smaller games first, I explain the SFML part a lot more there. Now here, I'm not going to explain it as much, but I'll still will. So you don't have to worry. So render window, I'll explain it more shortly though. So if you want a thorough tutorial of SFML, I recommend you watch my SFML tutorial series. Uh, I have one of those. And also a C++ tutorial series if you don't know 100% what you're doing in C++. So let's create our window. We'll create a window here. SF render window. This is where we'll put all our rendering. And we'll create a little private function here called void init window. And all that's going to do is initialize my window for me. So when you create a window like this, what you can do is you can access it window. And I'll be writing this a lot and probably you noticed, but I do like writing this. You don't have to do it if you don't want. I think it improves my readability. But if you don't like it, don't use this when you don't need to. Um, anywho, when you create a window like this, you want to go to dot create and that will allow you to create a new window. Very simple. And we're going to do a SF video mode. Now video modes are always good to know about. Video modes are a way to contain bits per pixels and also your resolution. And you can get your desktop's resolution directly through SFML by using this functionality. So SF video mode colon colon get desktop mode and this will get whatever video mode you have on your desktop okay it's a very good thing to know but what i'm going to do i'm not going to do that i'm going to do an 800 by 600 
window is a lot easier to work with if we have the same size of our game. All right, me and you, we should have the same size. So this is going to be game four here. And then we're going to do a style, SF style default for now. But we don't want default. We want, actually, you know what? We'll do that at once. We'll do, we want a close button. And we want a SF style. We don't want full screen. We don't want none. We don't want it to be resizable. We want the title bar. So we want close and title bar. That's it. This means that we'll be able to see our name of the title of the game, the window, and we'll be able to close the window. We'll have a close button. So those two things we want. And also we want SF context settings. Okay, so it didn't like that context settings. Uh, it doesn't really matter until we do anything special with it. So we'll keep it as it is. Once your init window function is complete, you want to call it in your constructor. Init window, simple as that. You will initialize your window and you're good to go. Now, before we end this initial video, I'm going to go into your, my public section in game.h and I'm going to create a function section here. Or should it be in here actually? Function. Sorry about that. There we go. And we're going to do a SF render window reference get window. And this is going to be so we can access the window as we actually I'll do a const in here as well. Const. Uh, we access it so we can get its state. And I want to check if it's open or not. That's pretty much what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and return this window here but we're not going to be able to change anything because it's const right so once you do that you're good to go go into your main and what we're going to do is we're going to make a little while loop i'm going to remove everything else you pretty much want it to look like it's looking now while above the while loop of course you want to create your game object first of all so game game that's all you have to do game dot get window dot is open We'll check if the window is, while the window is open, I want to run the game. All right. Pretty much, that's pretty much what I want to do. Pretty much, pretty much. Okay. Pretty much, that's what we're doing. And then, of course, we have a constructor. What we want to do before we end the video again is to add a void update here and a void render here. These two functions in themselves are going to be my game. All right, this is gonna be my game, my update and my render function. You've probably seen this before, so it's nothing new to you. Go to your main.cpp, do game.update, and then game.render. Once that's done, your game is good to go. You can do anything in here. You can do a little std c out uh, lol in here. And then a new line, of course, run it. And you'll see that it's going to do a bunch of lol, hopefully. Okay, we've got an error here. Let's see what our error is, pre-compile. Okay, so now your game is running and you won't be able to close the window, but you'll be able to close it from the console window. Now, what you want to do is you want to include stdfx.h above all other includes before you, in every CPP file, okay? Above everything else, that's pretty much what you want to do. And then you're good to go. Now we have a basic structure, a framework to work with. We're going to keep working with this as we go. In the next video, we will look at how we're going to actually render a player. And from there on, we'll work with the collision and so on and so on. But hopefully you'll enjoy this mini series. This is going to be a fun game to work on. So yeah, thank you so much for the support. Thanks for checking this out. Take it easy. Work hard. Check out all the description box, all that stuff, all the links. Drop a like, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one, right? Bye-bye.